Hey y'all, welcome to Soccer For Us. I am really excited for this episode because it will be a very interesting and fun exercise. We are going to do a draft of venues here in the United States to host a World Cup qualifying schedule for the U.S. men. Obviously, that starts in September. It's going to be interesting. This is all for fun and games. Uh, Hopefully, we don't have to be as serious on this episode as we will once we actually have to start playing meaningful games in June. But to help me do this draft, I am excited to bring on two guys who enjoy the random and weird of all that is soccer. So first off, I have the Grant Duke of American Outlaws, Donald Wine. He's also uh, the host of the Stars and Stripes FC podcast and the editor over there. Donald, thanks for joining me. Uh, You have a lot of experience going to U.S. soccer games in a lot of these stadiums, so hopefully that will be valuable insight as you draft these locations. Yeah, and thanks for having me. Uh, I think... Uh, I have a nice little war room chart here, like I like I did for the NFL draft. So I feel like a general manager of stadiums for right now. So hopefully that'll pay <laughs> off. Well, hopefully it does because you know, at, but even though this is fun and games, we do have a very important seven game uh, World Cup qualifying schedule to come up, and it is important that we get the best atmosphere. And also to help us do that, we have Jarrett Smith from Soccer Down Here. He has been. Uh, the purveyor of weird soccer at STH for as long as I can remember. Jarrett, thanks for being here. No, thank you. It should be a lot of fun. I don't have a war room. I don't have a sheet. I have a Google Doc open, and I'm just kind of going to see what happens here. I, I think, really you know, plan. I don't think there's but a I don't good think plan US for soccer us. Has a plan. Look, everyone has a plan until their stadium is drafted before them. So we'll, right. we'll see what happens. <laughs> So obviously we're drafting this World Cup qualifying schedule and we don't fully know the whole like opponent schedule part of it. We do know the dates, but we just don't know exactly who we're playing. Um, I'll run through that just briefly so that everyone's on the same page. Um, Obviously CONCACAF has allowed, uh, what is it, five teams into the final round of qualifying because they are benevolent and want to not have the European model where everyone plays everyone and you have crap games in your final round of qualifying. Who was it that said that earlier? I think it was uh, some English guy who was very upset that we had to watch like Portugal and San Marino play to a 10 nil scoreline. But uh, nothing of that in CONCACAF. We give people right free passes and somehow the U.S. got one. So we're lucky there, even though uh, we failed last time. And to fill out the rest of the eight, we're going to have three qualifying teams. They're playing right now. Actually, they play in a couple of weeks. Uh, they're playing during that Nations League window to determine who will be qualifiers to make it into the final round of CONCACAF World Cup qualifying. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the teams. There's uh, basically every other team in CONCACAF is in it. But uh, real quick, we're probably going to have uh, in the A and F play-in, you have four, uh, six groups, Group A, Group F. I'm thinking it's probably going to be El Salvador versus Trinidad and Tobago. But Trinidad has been a right mess for a couple of years now. And they're struggling to even get out of that group. So El Salvador, Antigua, and Barbuda, Trinidad, heck, Port, Puerto Rico has a shot now. So who knows who's going to come out of that A and F pairing? Uh, the B and E pairing is going to be Canada. We can talk about this all I want. I know the Canadians are, you know, scared to have to possibly play Haiti in a match that matters. But Canada, you're probably going to the final round of World Cup qualifying for the first time since, you know, it's been relevant. And uh, in the C and D pairing, is, I'm thinking is going to be Curacao or Guatemala from Group C coming through on that. Maybe Dominican Republic or Panama can figure out a way to get to the final round, but I, my money's on Curacao. That's what we're just going to have to work with. We don't really know who we're playing in these matches, but uh, we will find that out in June. And then come September, we open up with a uh, qualifier. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to explain the rules, but do you all have any comments on the random and uh, convoluted method that CONCACAF has used to determine the final round of World Cup qualifying this go around. It is the greatest confederation on the planet. <laughs> I say that I, I, I run a podcast where literally every episode is about one part of CONCACAF that is just so great that only CONCACAF could do this. I mean, this is the same confederation that moved a uh, Champions League match the morning of the match because they decided that a retaining wall had just appeared overnight magically and that was too close to the field. This is CONCACAF. So naturally, we're going to have some convoluted way to arrive at the octagon, uh, but I'm excited for these matches in June because I think there are some teams that you mentioned a couple, but 
uh, you know, one team that I was really hoping to make it would be St. Vincent and the Grenadines. However, due to what their what situation they're going on with the volcano, it's going to be very they're they're going up against really tough times. So it'd be it'd be a miracle for them at this point to qualify, even though they've been doing pretty well so far. Yeah, this uh, this has been a difficult road to navigate for a lot of teams, um, but the St. Vincent and the Grenadines dealing with an actual erupting volcano uh, in their islands has been probably the thing that we did not plan for, which is weird. So moving on to the rules about this little draft that we're going to do. Obviously, there are seven home World Cup qualifying matches, so we're going to have seven rounds of picks. Uh, we will have a snake draft. Jarrett gets to go first. Donald second. I will go last. Uh, basically, we have to choose from all MLS stadiums. We have all USL stadiums and a couple of NISA stadiums. Basically, I did weed out a couple of like, obviously, um, some of the USL to, you know, the USL teams are playing at uh, the same stadium as their parent MLS club. Uh, some stadiums honestly are not acceptable in my opinion like they're if they're below four five thousand yeah if they're below five thousand capacity i didn't put them on the list um we're gonna be weird but not too weird and uh other than that it was really i mean like new york city fc is on here so hey if you want to play in a baseball stadium it's, it's there for you um yeah and then you can also add a wild card pick if you want so you can find a you know a stadium that's not in a that's not a soccer stadium basically and you can use that and then at the end we'll put together a schedule and Put it out on Twitter, and we'll have you all tell us which one of us put together the best home qualifying schedule for the U.S. men's national team. Any questions before we get started on this, gentlemen? Nope. Let's do it. No, let's do this. Let's get weird. Right. Let's get dumb. <laughs> that is the name of this exercise, is to be weird and stupid and dumb. Uh, Jarrett, you get to go first. So the first pick in this draft, who are you taking? Does it matter who we're playing? I'm going to ask that. No, you can add... So what you will do is you'll pick your seven and then at the oh, end yeah, yeah. we'll figure out you can make, you know, who you want to play at each location. So that that's for the last part of this little uh, venture. Fair enough. Uh, my first one coming off the board is I'm going to go a little sideways and go a little north. I'm going to take Allianz Field in Minnesota, St. Paul. What about that stadium makes you think that that will be a great place for the U.S. to play a World Cup qualifier? It's got a nice attendance number. It's it's a cozier new stadium. It's kind of out there in the middle of nowhere, in a sense, in the grand scheme of the United States, being a sprawling metropolis of a country in the grand scheme of things. I like the idea of putting a game up there strategically located. And Minnesota mm. fans have, have, have been through a lot. <laughs> Some have been through a lot, a lot. And uh, let's pay them back with a World Cup qualifier. Well, I, I personally like that pick. That's a great pick, I think, and uh, probably one that was rated highly on all of our draft boards. Um, so, Allianz Field, uh, Minnesota United FC, that is off the board. Now it is over to Donald to, for the uh, the second pick. So, I'm going to go with the stadium that I think still to this day is the best soccer-specific stadium in the United States, and that is Children's Mercy Park, sporting Kansas City's home in Kansas City, Kansas. You know, yeah, that is, like pick, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't even argue with that one. They will obviously be hosting Gold Cup matches uh, this summer as well. And uh, yeah, Children's Mercy Park is a beautiful venue. And uh, I, I think your reason in there, Donald, is correct. It's a very, uh, very, I think you're going to get a really good home crowd at Children's Mercy Park. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the, the quality that they have there and every game there has always been epic and we're undefeated there. So that also bodes well. So that is uh, children's mercy park off the board. It now comes to me um, as the third pick I am taking for a match that will hold great importance, but I'm taking the stadium. I'm going to take West end stadium in Cincinnati. I think it is one of the most beautiful soccer stadiums I've seen in this country. Uh, I'm excited for it to open and hope to go to a match there this season regardless, but uh, I am taking West End up in Cincinnati. I can get behind this. <laughs> Nobody we'll that. see. I mean, it's, it's brand new. We haven't even used it yet, but, you know, sh they're putting games in Austin for the next, you know, 12 years, it seems like, with the U.S. soccer scheduling there. So uh, <laughs> you yeah. might as well get on board and, and put some – schedule some matches in a stadium that's not even open yet. 
I well, am going a, to for my. Oh no, we're snake. Yeah, no, as you go. Oh my god. Well, you know, we can. Yeah, we're doing a snake draft. So no, I no, let's get snake the, draft. I let's, let's, do pick, yeah. let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs> so for my second pick uh, in this little snake draft, I am taking probably. I said. Uh, Cincinnati's was one of my favorite soccer stadiums that's been built recently. One that has been turned into a soccer stadium that I think is, if we're talking weird and we're talking random and we're just talking about the love of soccer, I am taking Breeze Stevens Field in Madison, Wisconsin. Ooh. Full bingo here for my second pick. Ooh, that's an interesting pick. You're going to I've, I've been there. Central American country to this. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Do they have a track around the field or something? No, they, like, don't. they don't. It's just <laughs> it's just a tight space and uh, randomly configured and a weird alignment. And you've got this like beer garden area behind one goal and trailers behind the other for the bathrooms. It is uh, wonderfully USL. Let's. Uh, I, I just. I feel like it's a great venue. Interesting pick. Uh, I think I am. I up next. You are up next, Donald. You get your second pick. Okay, well, I'm going to go with my tried and true, my people. Let's go to Audi Field in DC United, Washington, the state, Washington DC, right here, my home, twenty thousand strong. We rock here. Let's go do it. And I, I knew figured, you guys you may not have picked it, but damn it, I'm going to pick it. So I figured it would have wrong that, that, that I kind of miss there. RFK. Uh, no, like because we miss RFK there. too. It's still here for another like year. So here's the thing: we come up, you can come up in the fall. Or in the winter time, maybe, or maybe the spring, maybe not the winter, and come here for a World Cup qualifier, and then we can, as like a night before party, in the prelude to the night before, we can watch them implode RFK and have one last blowout <laughs> in lot eight. That'll be the night before. I'm telling you, it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna be the best. It's how we're gonna do it. Oh my god, this is this is perfect. As this, I think <laughs> you just told Jared. I need to be there when this happens. <laughs> <laughs> well. Like, because I remember watching games there, and then it got even better when you put the Washington Nationals in that cavernous building for so many years. They were only there for a year, but it, like it, it felt like it felt like ten years that there was. I mean, really, there was a there was a difference of maybe like three years between the Washington football team leaving DC United entering and the Nats coming and going. Like it just seemed like yeah. it was very quick. Time just kind of ceased for a minute there. Oh man, what about the poor raccoons? Oh, the poor raccoons. Ronnie, uh, Ronnie's still doing well. He's still doing well. I, I talk to him regularly. <laughs> this is already right. the most beneficial <laughs> podcast I've done this week <laughs> for my oh, own Jared, uh, Jared, that is. I love that you are concerned about the the raccoons and how we're going to have to, you know, repatriate them outside of once uh, RFK has been demolished. They'll be fine. Well, they have offices. They have office space at Audi Field already, so they're oh, ready. Okay, to, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we 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 look out for our own. The <laughs> raccoons and Ben Olsen were all I was really worried about. <laughs> well, Jarrett, you get your uh, pick now. So you had Allianz Field in the first round. Who are you taking in the second round? I'm going to take in the second round. We broke the cur- the, the curse was broken by Mexico uh, last time we did this. Yeah, you're already highlighting. You know where this is going. New Columbus Crew Stadium. We got to find a way. I don't know what we have to sacrifice to turn that place back into the magic that it was uh, at the end of its run. But with a new stadium, you reestablish the magic. And I, I'm, I'm banking on Columbus, Ohio, having as much of the magic as the stadium itself. did. I think the rage of uh, Columbus crew fans will uh, be good enough to spur us on to victory, no matter who we play there. Columbus. I just realized this new Columbus Crew Stadium we're going to change the name. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, you change. have thought about this more than they have thought about the decision. They, they, they got to change all the names. And you know what? If they're going to start changing like the name of the rivalry and stuff like that and trying to rebrand it, when we, no, we can't do that. I can't have it. So they keep that to themselves. They're going to put out a post. Hey, we, we got some thoughts about the term hell is real. No. <laughs> we're going to stop you right there. All right, well, you, since it is a snake ra- draft, you get to kick off the third round with the pick. So you've had Columbus Crew in the second round. You had uh, Minnesota United in the first round. Which stadium are you pay- picking in this third round? So in this third round, um, yeah, I kind of want to take this I want to take this back south, and we're going to make somebody suffer through some weather that's really unfortunate, but we're going to do it in Florida. Yeah, we're going to go down to Inter-Miami F- CF Stadium. And 
you're going to have to go play in Fort Lauderdale in the fall. And I'm really sorry to anyone who has to do it because congratulations. There's going to be a pop-up storm or about four 30 in the afternoon. It's going to Always. rain four inches of rain. Always. You're, you're going to think the world has ended. And when it stops, the sun will come out and you will be able to cut the air with a butcher knife. It'll be so thick with humidity. Look, I lived in Miami for three years and oh. went to law school down there. Let me tell you, it is the only place. I mean, D.C. has it a little bit. Houston has it a little bit. New Orleans has this as well. It's one of the few places in this country where when it rains, it gets muggier. Usually rain clears out the mugginess. And it's like, oh, man, it feels great. No, there it just gets muggier and mustier, and you just feel like you just want to die. And see, D.C.'s a sneaky pick for that because people forget D.C.'s built on a swamp. Oh, DC, we get, I mean, we have, we have, it's hotter and more muggier here than it is in Miami in the summertime. So it, it, it's one of those things where people just say, oh, you know, drain the swamp. We're like, no, you can't drain the swamp. This is a swamp. Like, it's going to be one, <laughs> no matter who you bring, who you send here to mess my city up, it's still going to be a swamp. Well, I do like that Enter Miami pick. Um, I obviously am coming back off a trip to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, it was actually, I will say, a very surprisingly good stadium. Uh, the only issue I have is there's no TVs in the concourses. So uh, don't expect to be able to watch the game while you're waiting on a beer. It is a temporary stadium. Drew, you know, they, yeah. they left out all the vowels, <laughs> Drew Pink Stadium. Um, but Not it's also stadium. supposed to be temporary. <laughs> Yeah, temporary for a decade. We'll yeah. see. Um, <laughs> no, I, I genuinely do hope that Miami gets their own stadium in Miami. And I know that there are plans, but uh, the process will not be expedient. Let's just put it that way. I'm just going to put a stadium Never. in Hialeah and see what happens. Oh, that'd be dope, actually. I would I would go to <laughs> every game there. I, I might get season <laughs> tickets from here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we went to Fort Lauderdale last pick. Donald, in this uh, third round, you have your pick. Who are you taking? Sometimes you have to take the stadium before the stadium. And for this pick, because of that, I am picking Dick's Sported Goods Park in Denver, home of the Colorado Rapids. Why? Because it's at altitude. And before yep. you go to Azteca, you want to acclimate with altitude. We are perfect both at Dick Sporting Goods Park and unbeaten at Azteca when we do this duo. So that is my pick, Dick Sporting Goods Park. That is strategery, and I appreciate that. Always, always. If only we had a La Paz here. <laughs> Well, I don't think we can recreate La Paz, but I do agree that playing in Denver before going to play Mexico in El Azteca, uh, it just makes sense. It just makes sense. And I, personally, I like Denver, so I'm okay with that trip, potentially. That would be fun. I get the third this uh, pick next in the third round. And, Donald, I actually was on the same kind of wavelength as you. I am taking Rio Tinto in Salt Lake City. Um for exactly the same reason, I just particularly like Rio Tinto better than Dick's Sporting Good Park, uh, having the full, basically, surround sound of fans in the stands. And I think it's just a prettier stadium, to be quite honest. But uh, same same thought process. you got to pick thing. you got to pick an altitude stadium to play at. The other one could have been, you know, Colorado Springs just built a new stadium that looks really mm -hmm. fun. But uh, I think you got to go with Rio Tinto here for me anyway. And the funny thing, my my rationale behind this is not necessarily because we have a game right before Mexico, because Mexico at Mexico is the first game in right. that window. So I pictured playing that Honduras game in February in altitude and having those guys remain in altitude the entire month, have a game, maybe at, yep. at another like friendly or something against some random team before they go off to, to Mexico, but, all, but training at altitude for an entire month and get that beneficial thing would make a lot of sense well and you bring up a good point because it is such a weird schedule we're used to the you play one game and then a couple days later you play another and you go home but with this one you're going to be traveling to and from uh you know the u.s has either one or two home games in each cycle but you have three games in a week basically that's an interesting dynamic to deal with so to your point if you have your okay we're just training at altitude this window then great you know you can leave from denver go straight to mexico city not a problem you can leave from salt lake go straight to mexico city you're playing and training at altitude it just makes more sense when you have a mexico game that uh will you know it's going to be hard to prepare for it because you're not going to have a whole lot of time but just already being there will uh make the transition much easier 
Absolutely. All right, so I get to kick off the fourth round, and for my fourth pick, I am picking, going back to Orlando as well, I'm an Atlanta United fan. I hate everything about this club, but damn it, they've got a great stadium, and I'm picking Orlando City Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Again, another place we have been undefeated in. It is also in Florida, so there's that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The chaos meter just goes up when you play anything in Florida. It does. You, you you harness the power of Florida, man. And that is a wild card, no matter where, no matter what part of the state you're in. Every country well, and, has to have their own version of Florida, man. And I'm afraid of what each one in Concacaf is. But Florida, man, feels like it's really dangerous. <laughs> that metric is uh, that's one of those uh, intangibles that you always get, and. Uh, it's just hard to prepare for. You can't prepare for the just and, – and to be honest, Orlando City Stadium, the the purple wall, that supporter section area is quite intimidating. It's really cool. And when – I remember in 2017 being there for the Panama game, and you could tell that the Panamanian players were a little just overwhelmed uh, because, I, I mean, I was five feet from Tim Howard when he was warming up. You know, like you are right on top of those players, so uh, it's a very intimidating place to play. All right, Donald, your fourth pick. You have so far Audi Field, you have Children's Mercy Park, and you have Dick Sporting Goods Park. Where are you going in this fourth pick? Okay, so I'm going to need a clarification on this. So, All right. the city that I am choosing is Nashville. Oh, okay. So the problem is right now they play at Nissan Stadium, which I would say yes, we could do that. However, their new stadium is scheduled to be open in February of 2022, which would make it eligible for that final match day. Can I pick that one instead of Nissan? So I will go with the new Nashville SC Stadium and make that the swan song of the octagon. Basically, at this point, we'll have come back from Mexico. We will have qualified because we beat them in Azteca for the first time ever. And then we're going to celebrate at the new Nashville SC Stadium. I really like that plan. Uh, it'll be probably, I think, yeah, it's the largest soccer specific stadium that will have been built, um, which sounds like, okay, yeah, you're just going to have a lot of people, but I, we've only had, I think the largest right now is Dick Sporting Goods Park at 27,000 for what they it's consider. It's uh, Exploria um, in Orlando. It's 20. There you go. Yeah. So this one, I think, would surpass that if I remember their capacity standards uh, correctly. Mm-hmm. So I, I am liking this experiment. Okay. Nashville, new Nashville stadium. I like, and I love Nashville. I I have to say that it is a fun trip. I would have no problem making that drive to be able to go watch our team. Hopefully seal up, celebrate qualification. Yeah. We'd be celebrating. Hopefully we're celebrating. Yeah. That'd be great. It'd be a nice change. (laughs) Yeah. Let's not go through the uh, tension of the last couple cycles. All right, Jared, it is your pick for the fourth round. All right. We're going to make people suffer. Um, because that's what we can do here. Um, we're going to go up to the lake, and we are going to take Soldier Field. Oh, Because I have the idea of, let's play Soldier Field in January, where the potential of lake effect snow potentially cripples somebody. Uh, God, who do we play in January? Let me see. Um, we play the enough. AF winner, and then we play yeah. Honduras in February. Good God. Either one of yeah. those. Make Honduras come play in lake effect snow, potentially. And if it's not lake effect snow... Make them play in the wind coming off the lake in February. I like it. Yeah, that's a good pick because, uh, I mean, the AF winner will be someone from a, a somewhat tropical climate, no matter what. And then you have uh, Guada- or Honduras as well coming in. That One of those playing in Soldier Field in late January, early February, that will be quite inhospitable for those teams that's for sure i hate that costa rica is in in october because the idea of making costa rica play in snow again and seeing if we can like you know trigger ptsd is really appealing stoke the flames of that rivalry i love that idea oh all right (laughs) not even gonna play games with them but you get a back-to-back pick to start us off in the fifth round uh you went to soldier field last time what's coming up next uh, what's coming up next is we're going to take this up into the Northwest. Uh, Providence Park is still one of my favorite I've been to, and I haven't been there in, God, almost 10 years. Uh, they hadn't done all the renovations that they've done now to make it bigger, but the last time I was there, it was one of my favorite stadiums I have been to on this continent. 
So I will take uh, Providence Park. But we can't play on turf. How dare we? Uh, <laughs> I won't get into that argument. I won't get into that argument. I'm just going to... Chip the grass in. <laughs> Lay it down. I'll just say my piece that I think is an outdated and uh, inaccurate assessment of playing on turf. But we'll have we'll put grass down there if we have to. Because I'm with you, Jared. Play Providence Park would provide one of the best atmospheres in World Cup qualifying that we've ever had. Uh, and I would love to be able to see that, especially when you have eight or seven matches. Why not go to the Pacific Northwest for one of them? Oh. All right. So next we have Donald. You're picking here in the fifth round. So who do you pick? All right. So I have a couple of options here, and I'm looking to see where I've been. Been to the East, been to the Midwest, been to the mountain time zone. I've been in the, the South. And you know what? I think I'm going to stay in the Southish, Midwestish with a nice little pick. This is a stadium that I think could develop into one that is really, really nice. Lynn Family Stadium, Louisville City Stadium. Uh, apologies to my friends in Cincinnati. But I wanted that. <laughs> that is, that is a, a, a solid under under like underdog pick I think would be a good one. I have to I'm just going to right now sing all the praises of that stadium. I I've on what was it 2020 during the pandemic I was driving from here in Atlanta to Chicago uh to go visit family and I I, I got to stop in Louisville. I made sure I went through Louisville and I I got out and they had open. The stadium wasn't technically open, obviously, because nothing was open, but it was basically all finished. Right. Mm -hmm. That stadium is gorgeous. It is absolutely a a beautiful little stadium and has everything that you want. You've got like a steep sloped bank uh, supporter section. U.S. soccer could even, if they wanted to, expand the capacity and put bleachers behind the other safe standing section they have on the opposite side because it's like a little bar and a beer garden area, which I I, th- I loved. It mm-hmm. is amazing. I, I love this pick. I wanted it for myself. I picked Cincinnati, though, because I think it's just bigger, but I love Lynn's fa- family stadium. Yeah, the only thing that was doubting I was doubting is the size, but it can be expandable up to 15,000, I want to yep. say. And if if they wanted to bring in extra bleachers and and you know reconfigure some some exits and stuff, they could get close to eighteen, which is about what you want for a yep. lot of these qualifiers. I love it. I I absolutely love that pick. Um, and play a qualifier with just metal bleachers wheeled in. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we you picked Inter Miami Stadium, so we got that. <laughs> it's true. I mean, like they're put pink, them, they're put pink them, bleachers. Put them like a, them like a they US Open Cup. When uh, Christos FC made their open cup run, where you just got people sitting on a hill because there's not seats. Oh, that's the soccer plex. I was at that game. Uh, that's at the <laughs> Maryland soccer plex. The Maryland soccer plex is like, you know how some people say like, oh man, that, that person is like 190 pounds soaking wet. Well, that stadium is like 5,000 seats soaking wet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what it is. I can't remember the name of it. It was the indoor one in Michigan. I remember watching Francis Atoy Ultimate play. Ultimate US- soccer arena. Yes, that's my home. That's, I, I lived maybe 15 minutes from that growing up, uh, or at least I, I'm <laughs> older than that. It, it was built, you know, when I was growing up. But uh, Detroit City, actually, fun fact: Detroit City. I f- helped start the Motor City supporters, and the idea for Detroit City was spawned by going to a Michigan Bucks game. The owners went to a Michigan Bucks game at the Ellsman Soccer Arena and said, "We can do this in Detroit," and that is how Detroit City the idea for it was created. That's a, that's beautiful. Yeah. We are like a step away from playing a world cup qualifier in a Kibbe dome, but I'm not <laughs> against that either. You got to do, you got to do the, uh, the world's largest indoor dome uh, or inflatable dome, which is in Binghamton, New York. <laughs> it's literally just like, you know how you go play golf, uh, at a driving range and the driving yeah. range has a little bubble. That's basically what it was, except it was a bubble that had a soccer soccer field inside. Man, this is like playing to the Carrier Dome or the Fargo <laughs> Dome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I am going to pick, and uh, I am choosing for uh, my fifth round pick. I, you know, we haven't picked a really big stadium, um, and I think the reason that you know U.S. Soccer also has this trepidation, where you're just afraid to put a, a large amount of people for a U.S. Soccer game in, into a stadium because you just 
you know, you're afraid that you're not going to get the U.S. home crowd you want. And I understand that fear. But I think that we have progressed as a fan base and as a country that supports soccer. And I think we can find a large NFL stadium to play in. And so this is a homer pick. I don't care. I'm picking Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's a, it's a fantastic venue. It would be loud and rowdy and intimidating for any club to come or for any team to come play here. You can do 42,000 or, or just open it up. We're doing all 73,000 seats. We're going to uh, even have standing room only at the skywalk. We're, we're coming here to Atlanta to play in Mercedes Benz stadium. Mercedes Benz is a great stadium. Uh, I've, I've been there many times. I will probably be there twice this year um, for games. Okay. I think, I think I'm planning to come down with DC United plays and then another one. Uh, but uh, yeah, for me, it's the turf and, and it's not necessarily uh, any like fears or qualms about turf is that they have been very point blank that any turf fields will be excluded. And so that is how I did for me. Can't even argue with that. I understand. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fair. It's because again, if Audi field was turf, I would do the same thing. <laughs> I, uh, you know, we'll wheel in the grass. I don't care. You know, it's Georgia. We got sod everywhere. Uh, we'll figure it out. But I, I think I really do think that uh, both Mercedes Benz and what is it now? Um, oh, what are they rebrand to? Um, now I got to look at my sheet because I forget. Which one? Seattle. What is it called? Oh, Lumen, it's Lumen Field. Lumen, yeah. Lumen Field. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Safeco. <laughs> Safeco is the baseball Safe, field. I'm yeah. sorry. Quest Field. Whatever. Uh, Quest. We're going Entry. really far back. The Kling. The yeah. <laughs> Kingdom. I, I really feel like we're – I wish that it weren't the reality because I think that we could sell out both of those places for a U.S. game and it would be – Absolutely fantastic. I I get it. You'd have to find the right team because I don't think you could play Mexico in those venues. But you could play Costa Rica. You could play even Jamaica and have a decidedly U.S. crowd. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I I think – I mean, I think we're getting to the point where it depends – I think it still depends on the opponent. There's a few opponents that, no, I wouldn't do it. But there's some where I'm like, yeah, let's let's pack them instead of – limiting the attendance and we can make a even greater atmosphere by in, involving everyone and increasing accessibility to a lot of people. And that would be by putting them in some of these bigger stadiums. I mean, U S soccer has been spending a lot of money on lawyers, so they probably need to make up the revenue somewhere. And a 71,000 seat Atlanta, United, Atlanta United stadium would be a way to do that. If they did, they haven't hired me yet. They see I'm a turn. They, know know they keep call me. Come on, man. What's wrong with them? Oh, I know. They keep just skipping you over. I'm, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> well, I get to uh, then pick my uh, six-round pick, and I am taking uh, the other stadium that I think has – we picked a lot of good fan bases so far, but the one that I think would be just a hell of a lot of fun and would have a great vibe. I'm picking Bank of California Stadium in L.A. I think you got I think you can play in L.A. Obviously, it would also be good if you're playing some of the Central American teams. You you know fly from L.A. down to Central America – um, I think Bank of California gets a, a run. I legitimately do think that Bank of California gets a play in this World Cup qualifying cycle regardless. Uh, so I'm taking it off the board. I don't hate that. So that means I, I think that's a good pick. It is, you know, honestly, between that and uh, Dignity Health Sports Park, a.k.a. Home Depot, a.k.a. StubHub, a.k.a. whatever <laughs> they, else they've called it in the past. Uh, I think between the two, you have a nice little thing. And, and honestly – as much as they don't like going to the West Coast for for games, I wonder if in that January window where we have two home games, that one of them isn't on the West Coast, what like it normally would be. All right, so I like that. I, I like my pick uh, with that one going to LA, and I like your reasoning, Donald, because I really do think that the reason they didn't go to you know the, the West Coast games was because you're bringing players over from Europe. I get it; it's a long flight, but when you're playing multiple games, uh, possibly on the road. And, you know, you need a place that's more closer for travel for that reason. The West Coast or places like that are more likely to get a look in this setup than, you know, you get one home game or you fly mm-hmm. in and you fly out. So that that's one of the reasons why I do think that Bank of California will get a, a play in this uh, World Cup qualifying cycle. And they haven't not done it before. I mean, we had what? uh whatever the San Jose Earthquake Stadium was when it first opened, Avaya. They had that, uh, of the, well, that was Pooley's first uh, World Cup qualifier that we had there. So 
I think they could do it. Um, but Donald, your pick now here in the sixth round. You've got a pretty good uh, dots all over the map here. Where do you think you're going to go next? All right, I'm going out towards the West Coast, but I'm not going all the way. Uh, it is a place that I have not been to yet, but I am eagerly looking forward to it. It has been told that it is one of the most nicest stadiums in the entire country. It is my wild card pick. It is a Roomba. Yes! It is a Legion Stadium. <laughs> yes. 72 large. Uh, inside, apparently, is absolutely incredible. Hopefully, we get to see it in the Gold Cup final on August 1st. But uh, that would be a nice way to kick off a January. Send everybody to Vegas. You know, tire, tire out a bunch of teams at the casino. And then keep going along the road and hopefully use that January window to qualify. I'm all for the Roomba, the the star, the Death Star, whatever you want to call it, man. <laughs> I'm here for that. I'm so excited for that stadium. And I'm with you, Donald. I obviously US has to make it there, but I might just book that trip to Vegas for that weekend for the hell of it, because mm-hmm. why not? It's, it, I mean, I've passed it. I was there a few weeks ago, and just looking at it, you just kind of like you're glad you're not driving because it's one of those. Yeah. Where I, and, and here's the thing: Jared World is like this too in Arlington. You drive past it, and you're just like, "Oh my god, that is like, it's like a space station just landed on planet Earth." And you look, and all of a sudden, you look in front of you and realize that you're about to run into like some car at 80 miles an hour. So <laughs> it is definitely one of those type of stadiums. It's incredible. It looks it looks great from the outside, but I've been told the inside is even even more phenomenal. I well, Jerry, you're a uh... Mercedes Benz all the time. Cause I, I live oh, yeah. on the West side of Atlanta. And if I'm driving into the city, I come over a hill on South Cobb on the West side. I can see Mercedes Benz sitting on the horizon, like one of the motherships in an independent independence day. <laughs> exactly. I, uh, I, I really, I really like that pick. I think that would be a lot of fun. And it is grass. Um, so that does help. But mm-hmm. I think Vegas could really be just a phenomenally fun venue for a World Cup qualifier. I think everyone would. I, I don't think you'd have to sell people on that game. No. Uh, Jarrett, you are up for your sixth round pick. Where are you taking us? All right, two picks left. We're going to go down to Texas for one of these. Um, my second to last pick. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to go down and check out a Q2 stadium. Yeah. Apparently, because everyone else is but it seems like a really nice venue. I was hoping to make a trip out there for a United game this year, but since uh, they decided that Atlanta United doesn't have to go play the expansion franchise because scheduling, um, I'm going to have to either make a trip out on my own for a non-Atlanta United game or just you know wait on the back burner for it. Well, we've got a uh, women's national team game coming up in June there. We've got a uh, gold cup will be there. So yeah, it's, it's being booked. Why not book it for a World Cup qualifier? It is apparently available. So, <laughs> <laughs> like all things in Texas right now, it is like, open and like, available. They're like, hey, oh, oh, you want to come on like a Tuesday morning at ten? Check. Yep, our schedule's clear. You can come on in. <laughs> hey, Precourt's going to cash that check one way or another. I yeah, can't. he's getting that money. He is. <laughs> Man, he's not poor. Uh, and well, then, uh, I guess last round, your- yeah. Yeah, your se- seventh round, the last round. You're picking. You're starting us off. You've got. Uh, you've got the your last pick to make. What's right, we're your decision? Going off the board, and we're going to have to import grass again. Again, um, if we're going to if we're going to be allowed to import grass, I'm going to take a very similar approach to Donald in that I'm going to take people to a place where they are going to have fun and or get hurt in a very severe way. Uh oh. We're going down to the Superdome. Oh, no. Playing a World Cup qualifier in the middle of New Orleans. See, oh. see, here's why I don't like that pick. It's one because it's New Orleans is, is probably my favorite city. Uh, two, and you picked it, so I hate I hate you for it. Second of all, <laughs> I was trying to get people to Vegas so they could lose their money. You trying to make people lose lives in in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas is relatively safe fun. <laughs> New Orleans yeah, just, is only your wallet's in trouble in Vegas. Yeah. In, in New Orleans, everything's in trouble. Your body depends on what street liver, you go down. Your liver, it's it's great. It's it's it's. I love that place. Jared, I see city. your uh, I see your New Orleans, and almost want to raise you Shreveport for that same reason. Oh man, either uh, Shreveport <laughs> or Lafayette, either one. Like, hey, we're going to play a World Cup qualifying in the same field that the Raging Cajuns play. Cool. 
<laughs> I think I think New Orleans is. Uh, I like that. That is your wild card uh, pick to use. Uh, that is, um, man, that would be a fun and interesting location. And as an American outlaw, to be able to go to that game, uh, that would that we would have we would find a way to have fun. Sure. Imagine would find if us. you played a if you played a game during during Mardi Gras down there and you had to roll in some like I don't know Trinidad. Oh my god. Trinidad would not know what hit them. It would be it a wreck. So much fun. The oh, hand, you, had, you were required to have like 17 hand grenades per person before you hit the field. It's a FIFA rule, guys. It's a FIFA rule. You got to do it. <laughs> I, I got excited because I thought it would be later in March, but it's March 1st. So unfortunately, it wouldn't fall into a FIFA World Cup qualifying window. But why not? I mean, is, does Mardi Gras really have a time frame in New Orleans? It's... Why are they bringing the team in on a float? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, New Orleans is your last pick in the draft. Uh, so that is all seven of your picks complete. So now we go to Donald to make his final pick in this venue draft. This is a difficult one because I, I have a couple that I'm like, yeah, I could definitely pick that. But I'm also trying to be strategic here. And in the end, I know I know my man Jarrett went with uh, Soldier Field. I'm going to go with SeatGeek. And Ooh, SeatGeek okay. is not the best stadium. It's not because of the stadium. However, the stadium's great. The the stadium's great, but it's not like on my list. It's not, you know, one of the my top favorite stadiums. I will say though, it is easy to get to in Chicago. It is great for our team at the start of a window to start there and then fly anywhere in CONCACAF and then fly back to the United States. So my strategic is with logistics and really who who doesn't want to invade Soccer House and give them peace of their mind? We have the opportunity to do that. So uh, it's always a great time up there in Chicago. Minus the Malort, they can leave that in the lake. Um, or That's actually, a big don't gift bag don't, for the team that comes to play. They get a little Malort. I don't even wish that upon them. Um, <laughs> I, I want. I just want Chicago to bury all the Malort in Chicago, whatever wherever that is. I'll 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 help. It's going to take a long time, but I'll help. Uh, but because we need our guys focused, we need everybody focused on the task at hand. That's getting three points. We can't have Malort messing that up. So Seat Geek will go there, and then that way we can use that. To well, kind of fly I love Seat Geek Stadium. Honestly, I was there for when it opened. Um, it's a really nice stadium. You are very close to the action. Like you're right on top of the field, and that that makes it intimidating. So mm-hmm. uh, I like that pick for your final pick in the draft. I will go ahead and make mine. Uh, I have not picked. I don't think I've picked a really traditional place yet. Um, at least in my opinion, I don't think anything's like super traditional that I picked. Uh, I would like to see us go to a, a, a stadium that I feel like people don't really appreciate the way that it is built, the the location it has in the city. Houston. I'm going to BBA stadium. Uh, I love that little I loved that little stadium to go there. It's a nice stadium. Facade is great. The location in Houston is awesome. I'm picking Houston as my final stadium in this draft. Uh, you have to go there. I feel like again, they're you know they're getting 97 matches always. They they get basically every women's yep. game. They get. I think they're contractually obligated to get like eight uh, women's matches a year, uh, and then maybe a men's game. But yeah. Uh, H Town always always a, f- a cool place to hang out and visit. Um, the stadium I was actually at the opener, uh, the stadium opener okay. back in 2012. Um, so it was nice to be down there for that. Uh, I always got family there, so Houston I always I always you know I won't pop my collar at a uh, at Houston. It'll be it'll be a nice little place. And again, I think you're thinking logistics, so that's always a good place logistically. Yeah, and I, I think that it's honestly it's a great soccer stadium, and being close to other countries is great. But it, it's just it's a cool little stadium, um, and Houston is a lot of fun. So uh, that concludes our draft. We've all picked seven. Um, I will say that there there are a couple on here that we did not pick that I was a little surprised that are still on the board. Uh, we have uh, we have Red Bull Arena still on the board. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Chester's. Uh, Subaru Park is still on the board. We also have Toyota Stadium in Dallas still on the board. And I say that because those are some places that historically U.S. soccer has gone. But they're still out here. We didn't pick those. Uh, I think we just, you know, I don't know why. Donald, why don't you pick any of the uh, those stadiums, you know, that 
maybe more traditional soccer locations. Well, I did think about uh, San Jose uh, Earthquake Stadium. Yeah. Um, it's a place, again, where I believe we're undefeated uh, out there. Um, I did think about Subaru Park as well or PPL or whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever they call it. Um, so I did think about those two. Uh, and those two really just came down to, you know, instead of Philly, I picked DC. Instead of San Jose, I picked Vegas. Um, so uh, those were those. Red Bull, you know, I, I, I'll be I'll be real. I don't like Red Bull as an arena. Um, I don't like Red Bull as a team. I don't like Red Bull as an entity, as a label, or as a crew. Um, but they know that. So uh, and also going there, I think the team plays there plays well there generally. But mm-hmm. we can't have a home field advantage there, and we've we've had that happen many times. So uh, unless it's a women's game, I don't think we. I don't think I go there. Yeah, I think I. I kind of want to stay away from Red Bull Arena for any men's match. Uh, Jarrett, any reason why you didn't pick, you know, like Dallas or uh, Chester, Pennsylvania, or, or any of those, you know, uh, specifically? Well, some of it was strategic in terms of travel to make sure that making this easy on the team to travel, especially for some of these games where you have, you know, a game, and then five days later you got another game. You want to make the travel as simple as we can, and we want to minimize getting kind of weird. And then uh, some of the newer ones, I just I want to see a game at these newer venues. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go to. I'll, you know, tell you what, we'll go to Red Bull Arena if you promise to take the tarps off. <laughs> oh, that's not. I fair. mean, so I, I I have a question for the two of you. Uh, I you know I did my list and I organized them. So for Gillette Stadium and for Yankee Stadium, did you leave them at the bottom of your list? for posterity's sake, or did you just completely remove them from your list altogether? I kept them there for chaos reasons. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like both answers are correct and wrong at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> I They're on my list, but they are at the bottom because I was just like, well, if I have to pick them, they need to be there, but I did not want to. I, don't. I, well, I, put, them, I put them at the bottom. I put them at the bottom and specifically said, okay, there's how many? One, two, three yeah. of us. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stadiums. Seven times three is 21. I will not have to pick them. Yeah. Even if I am left with the last pick, I don't have to pick them. So that's why they're at the bottom. It's, man, I, I could, you could not have paid me to, to, to make them play a game in, in, in Yankee Stadium. No one deserves that. So, so look out for that uh, opening game in September in July yeah. Stadium. <laughs> Uh, I can't get out of my head talking to Jeff Lorenowitz one time and him mentioning like playing in Gillette Stadium, especially when the when you know the Rebs weren't drawing literally anybody. Talk about how hard it was to play even as an away team in an empty stadium where there's just no energy. And you think, okay, well, there's no rabid fans to kind of create like the tension and make the unease and make the home field advantage a thing. Uh, you know, he talked about it being just as tough when it was that empty. It was just zero energy. They had to create everything on their own. It's a hard task. I've been there once. I don't have to go back. <laughs> That's all that need be said. Hey, y'all. It's Bart. Just want to let you know, I got my Play Like a Girl scarf from American Football Provisions, and I love it. Enjoyed wearing it when I was watching the U.S. women play in the April Friendlies, and I am excited to wear it as I watch them go for gold in Tokyo this summer. American Football Provisions is a soccer apparel company created for supporters by supporters of the beautiful game. Their mission is to support all levels of professional soccer in the U.S. and promote a culture of respect and inclusion. You can celebrate the past, present, and future of female American footballers with this Play Like a Girl scarf. Pick yours up today at AmericanFootballProvisions.com. That's AmericanFootballProvisions.com. They also have a large selection of other soccer fan accessories like stickers, mugs, hats, you name it. Again, go to AmericanFootballProvisions.com and browse their extensive collection of fan accessories. So, okay, so we have, I'm going to run through the picks as we go, and then we are going to fill out our state, our schedule for all this. So we have all seven picks. Uh, Recap, Jarrett, you picked Allianz Field up in St. Paul, Minnesota. You picked Inter-Miami CF Stadium down in Fort Lauderdale, New Columbus Crew Stadium in Columbus, Ohio, uh, Providence Park in Portland, Q2 Stadium in Austin, and Soldier Field in Chicago. And then you also picked, as your wild card, the Superdome in New Orleans. So uh, there you go. Uh, Donald, you had Audi Field up in D.C., Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City, Dick's Sporting Good Park in 
Commerce City, Colorado slash Denver, Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, SeatGeek Stadium in Bridgeview slash Chicago. You picked new Nashville SC Stadium in Nashville. Uh, a little bit of a loophole, but it, it's allowable. And then your wild card was Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, my picks were uh, I had – Bree Stevens Field up in Madison, Wisconsin, BBVA Stadium in Houston, Bank of California Stadium in LA, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, Rio Tinto in Sandy, Utah, and then West End Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. All right. So we all have our list. We all know who, about who we picked. Um, to run through the schedule, September, fi- uh, September 5th, we open against the winner of that B&E qualifier, which... Donna, I think you'll agree with me. Jared, I think you'll agree with me. It's probably Canada. I hope it's not Canada. I hope they slip and tumble. <laughs> our, our, neighbor, our our great neighbors to the north, who I, I I do adore dearly. I hope they I hope they slip and tumble, and some team like Haiti can fall through. But yes, it's most likely going to be it's, Canada. It's, the way things are going right now, probably Canada. Uh, so Jared, we're playing. We're just going to assume we're going to play Canada or any team, but it's probably Canada on September fifth. Which of your stadiums are you playing in on that date? We're going to make Canada go down to Inter Miami. Yes. You're going to play Fort in September. <laughs> yeah, you're going to play a September that. game in Miami, Canada. Let me know how you feel. See, I I think that's a decent pick. However, Canada has played all of their qualifiers in Florida so that's far, true. so <laughs> it might be a home game for them at this point. Oh, man, the COVID, land has COVID got to ruin to everything. I know, right? Uh, Donald, where are you playing this opening World Cup qualifying match September 5th? Where are you playing it? Come on, bring them over here. Audi okay. Field in D.C. That'll be a nice opener. Uh, also, again, strategic. Uh, you can get a nonstop flight to Honduras from there. And also, wherever we come from, whether it's, uh, I believe, uh, Trinidad and Tobago or somewhere else. I don't think it – actually, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis – uh, look out for them because they actually lead that yeah. group. Uh, but you can get direct flights or at least one stop flights for fans from DC to, uh, to or from that place to DC. So that's where I think we start this little octagon trip here. Yeah, that is the first home game we are coming back from. I who knows honestly? It's a weird. There's like a, a lot of teams that are. Because we're not far enough in there qualifying. We don't really know who we're playing then. I, it could be El Salvador. It could be Antigua and Barbuda. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, but yeah, okay. So you're putting it up there in D.C. Um, also, to kind of like Jared's point, um, you know, if it's Canada and they have to play in Washington, D.C., got that swampy mugginess that could affect them. Maybe we'll see. Oh, it'll still um, be hot. The only yeah. thing, the only caveat to this will be if it is El Salvador. We have the lar- one of the largest Salvadorian populations in the world, yeah. even even more than in yeah. El Salvador. So if it's El Salvador, we would move that game elsewhere. But for now, I assume it's not El Salvador. Y'all come over and s- check out my neck of the woods. All right. I like that. Um, well, I am picking this. I can't. I, I really would have liked to have kicked it off in Atlanta. I'll be honest. But uh, September 5th, Labor Day weekend, we've got 27 college football games going on in the stadium at that point in time. Miami, Alabama. Is is that Miami, Alabama? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, So I am also thinking, though, a little bit about travel. This is the first, you know, kind of three window or three match window. I know we're trying out with the Nations League, but, you know, two of those matches are in the same location. So uh, thinking of the travel. And thinking of all the logistics, I am kicking it off in Houston BBVA Stadium. Okay. All right. All right. Start there. Get get the get the ratchetness out the way. There we go. All right. So that's the first date, September fifth. Uh, October. We have two qualifiers in October. All right. Home qualifiers here. We uh, will play Jamaica on the seventh, and we will play Costa Rica on the thirteenth uh, with a game against. Probably Curacao, maybe Guatemala, also sprinkled in there. So, Jarrett, where are you playing your September 7th game? October 7th, we're going to Q2 Stadium for Jamaica. Ooh, I like that. Interesting. I feel like Austin would be a good good time in in, uh, October 7th. That might be fun. Yeah, and I believe that is also a holiday weekend as well. So, uh, or at least the start of a holiday weekend. Well, I mean, the college kids, they, they don't need a reason to party, but that's just even nope. a better reason. Sixth Street. 
Watch out. Oh, man. I actually, that, now I'm excited for that possibility. All right. Uh, Jared, I like that pick. That's a, that's a, that's about us. That's even normal. Like that's a, that's not even chaos. That's just <laughs> so like, a, sorry, yeah, that makes sense. Sense. I know. <laughs> I mean, Austin's weird. So you have that regardless, but like, I'm like, Oh no, that let's do that. Uh, Donald, where are you playing to, uh, October 7th versus Jamaica? So Jamaica is going to be coming. Uh, they're going to be starting where they play on the road and then they go back home. They're going to be used to some warm weather at this point. So I'm going to take them to a place where it could be cold. And okay. that is Sea Geek in Chicago uh, or Bridgeview. Uh, because at that point, it could it could be 80 degrees, sure. But it could also be 30 and snowing at that point. So if that's the case, that will be fits for Jamaica. I I really do. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. Um, yeah, I... Okay. I like that idea to put Jamaica up there where it's cold. Uh, I think regardless, that would just be a tough trip for them to have to go that far north um, after. So, okay. I like it. All right. So for my October 7th versus Jamaica, I am putting Jamaica. It's it's not going to be as uh, – this isn't like the most strategic pick. Um, but I do think it would be a lot of fun. And I think that I would put them in Exploria Stadium in Orlando. I think that October in Orlando, it would just be a fun visit for the U.S. fans. Uh, you're going to have to make a trip to probably the Caribbean of some sort or at least Central America. So at least that flight would be a little bit easier. So I'm playing that Jamaica game on December, excuse me, on October 7th in uh Exploria Stadium in Orlando. Again, we're undefeated there, and we like to play games there in October before we yep. go on the yep. road somewhere. Does that make sense? Uh, don't ask me how the game after that went, but yeah, um, yeah, I was there. I yeah, was there. I know. Well, we hey, we, we did we redeem we're just, ourselves? We're just, we're just nothing happened. Yeah, we uh, redeemed ourselves a couple years ago when we did. We, we smacked Canada and we went yeah. to the Cayman Islands, and the Cayman Islands was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> All right, so in the same window, we get, uh, like I said, we probably, it's going to be Guatemala, Curacao, one of those teams on October 10th. And then we come back home on October 13th against Costa Rica, uh, an old friend and rival. We played them in some weird places before. Uh, most notably, we had the snow game in Denver. Jarrett, where are you playing your October 13th game against Costa Rica? They're playing in the Superdome. We're putting grass in oh, the Superdome, my... <laughs> and we're making Costa Rica spend the weekend in New Orleans. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Let's it's go. A, it's a short trip-ish from Austin no, to yeah. New Orleans, comparatively speaking. Um, you know, you're going to be – you're going to try and minimize your travel. You're already going to be in the South. You're going to travel play. You're going to come back. You're not going to have to go to the Midwest. It's a shorter flight back to New Orleans. But we are going to make Costa Rica play a game in New Orleans. Okay. And October is just weird enough weather wise. You might be on like the front edge of a hurricane coming through there for all we know. <laughs> it's true. Okay. Uh, well, New Orleans is already a terrifying pick. And that I think actually is about the best way to get back at uh, Costa Rica for what they did to us last cycle. Donald, where are you playing this Costa Rica match on October 13th? So I thought about taking them back to uh, Dick Sporting his park uh, side uh, of the Snow Classico. Yeah. But. Instead, I think we need to make sure that we get these three points. They're one of the teams that mm -hmm. we should be beating at home and have had difficulty in the past. So I'm going to a place that I think could provide that atmosphere we need, and that is Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, okay. Lim Family Stadium will get them hammered on the bourbon trail, <laughs> and then they can come get got at Lim Family Stadium. <laughs> People don't know what to do with that much bourbon. <laughs> they don't. Well, no they're going to have to figure it out. Oh, that's just mean. I, like I love it. that. I really do. That's I, I think that of all your picks, Lynn Family Stadium makes the most sense for this this Costa Rica match. It's exactly what I had in mind when yeah. I thought about it a couple years ago when I was like, yeah, that'd be actually kind of a nice place to play. I can't wait to go out there and check it out. Well, my location I drafted for this very specific reason. And it's not my big it's not the biggest stadium. It's actually the smallest stadium that we drafted in this little exercise. But I think that if you play this Costa Rica match at Breeze Stevens Field up in Madison, Wisconsin. I think that's a home field advantage that the U.S. just would never not be able to get anywhere else. And I would love to see a smack Costa Rica up there in Madison on the little island. It would be great. 
go take them full mingo full mingo against costa rica we'd have oh, to design man. some pink jerseys for that game because we can't we can't you know you know they never miss with their jerseys. we can't we can't yeah. come looking like slouches we gotta come correct yeah well the i think i feel like they be, would the team yeah. would have to be something special oh my god exactly I, uh, so that's my pick for that one. Uh, I, full Mingo, we're going, and I think the Madison, Wisconsin fans, the four Madison fans would love it. Uh, and Madison, I, from everything I've heard about Madison, it is a fun town to go and just you'll you'll you will enjoy your time up there in uh, Wisconsin. So that is the Costa Rica and Jamaica windows in October. Uh, let's see. The next one is the most important match of all World Cup qualifying and the one where you have to get the stadium right, you have to get the location right. November 12th, it's a Friday night against Mexico. Jarrett, where are you putting this game? We're playing in Columbus. Of course. Okay, I knew it. We're taking this back to Columbus. We're going to try and put some good voodoo out there. We're going to try and put some new salt down, maybe sacrifice a chicken, whatever we got to do to get the magic back in Columbus. Somebody's got to put good vibes on that team and that city. And we we won't even rebrand the U.S. national team before we play in there. How about that? There's the deal. Hey, don't don't say things you don't mean and don't put any (laughs) ideas in their head. (laughs) I've already made them think about it. They're going to go in the middle of the game, actually. Jersey redesigned with Nike. (laughs) Uh, Well, I mean, I think you're right, though. I know everyone has talked about this, and I'm hesitant to put it in the new crew stadium, to be quite honest, just because we don't know how that – we don't know. But we do know how it tends to go in Columbus, Ohio. And I won't go to this game before Columbus, because I went to the last one and we lost, so maybe it's my fault. So I just will stay away. But I think – it is the most logical pick to put this one in New Crew Stadium up there in Columbus. And I'm just going to call it New Crew Stadium. Sorry, that's what it is. Don't tell me any other thing. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm going to say something that Columbus fans are not going to want to hear, especially given the week that they've already had. But the fortress and the magic and the mystique that was Dos Acero died on uh, November 11th, 2016 in Columbus. And we need to find another place for it. Uh, and that is why, for me... Uh, I, I thought that he, I thought that Jerry he had Allianz in his back pocket. I thought he was going to pull that out, but he went with Columbus. I'm going to go to where I, again, the best stadium in the country, Children's Mercy Park. That's where we're playing Mexico. That's where we're beating Mexico. I yeah, See, it's funny. Allianz was going to be my second pick to put it there to try and re reestablish that magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for me, I think it's between Children's Mercy and Allianz is the places where I want it. And this is a game that unfortunately I will not be able to attend. Uh, this time around, but uh, yeah, it is definitely one where we need to get that magic back. And I don't, I don't, if there's feelings, there needs to be feelings, but the feeling that I need is victory against Mexico uh, and get that, get that magic back. I think Donald, you have picked like not even trying to be stupid or weird. I think you picked the stadium that makes the most sense when you're talking about where the next logical place to play that Mexico match is because Mm -hmm. Kansas City, Kansas specifically, and Kansas City, Missouri, the metropolitan area, if you will, has a similar type of like vibe, especially soccer wise, to the Columbus, Ohio soccer vibe, right? Like Mm -hmm. the stadium, a little bit smaller, but it still is a phenomenally better stadium than what Old Crew Stadium was. I I really have to say that's probably the smartest location uh, pairing that we've had. Uh, in this draft and look Mexico fans even our fans like I want to see Mexico try to navigate the horror that is flying into Kansas (laughs) City's airport Uh, they're not going to want to do it so they're going to probably forfeit in the air uh, and have their flight diverted somewhere else that will make them happy so uh, yeah that's why I'm putting it there all right I uh, like I said I I wholeheartedly agree with that pick I think it it makes a whole lot of sense it really does I am playing this game, Mexico, November 12th. I know that I know that Columbus, Ohio had so much mystique, so many like good and bad feelings about it, so much of, uh, of history and just this weird, you know, hold over Mexico. But I agree, Donald, it, it, it has been broken. But I still think the state of Ohio has that about it. 
That's why I'm playing this. You're going to anger all of Columbus, aren't you? Hell is real, man. We're going to Cincinnati playing in West End Stadium. We're keeping it in Ohio because I think maybe Ohio is the trick here because Ohio is an interesting place as it is. Keep it in Ohio. We're going to Cincinnati. Also, the stadium looks beautiful. Bart choosing violence. I know. I'm sorry. That's just dumping on Columbus, France, Columbus SC fans. Say, not only, it. not only am I not giving it to you, I'm gonna put it in the place you want it the least. <laughs> not sorry it's about so it. <laughs> no, this, he's right. No, choosing violence is the right way to describe this. It is. Not yeah. only have you, not only have you hurt Columbus, you like you twisted the knife on him. I love it. This is perfect. Hey. This has to happen now. <laughs> Go to a better stadium, in my opinion. That's just the way I look at it. Oh, um, no, no, no. Play it at Nipper. Oh. Make them really mad. <laughs> oh, man, that would be – actually, I'll, I'll have to say Nipper Stadium is one of the coolest little college football stadiums that we I think we have in this country for where it's situated and all that. But, uh, no, Weston Stadium, that's where I'm putting this. I, I think you have to play Costa Rica there. Uh, the next one, we get a we get a weird break. You know, we don't play in December, uh, which would have been fun for I'll be uh, for Allianz Field up in uh, Minnesota. But we come back in a late January. We have a home game on January 27th against the winner of A versus F, which is going to be Trinidad or uh, could be uh, El Salvador, could be Antigua. But there's a weird like. We don't know who's going to win this because who knows? It could be St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, but it, I don't want to minimize the importance of that because uh, you're coming back in January, you need three points. And January in the United States offers an opportunity to give an atmosphere and an environment, physically environment, that we wouldn't be able to get anywhere else in CONCACAF except for maybe Canada. So, Jarrett, where are you playing this January 27th game? January 27th, we're going to Allianz Field. Yeah, that makes sense. We're, yeah. <laughs> keep it keep it cold. I mean, we're going to kill someone if we're not careful, but yeah. Hypothermia is on the menu. Oh, poor goalkeepers. <laughs> They're going to tell their defense to play a high line just so they can keep moving. I also feel like, not that that's a safe pick, but that's a good safe pick for Allianz to get a U.S. game and, like, when we played the Gold Cup opener that against, uh, against, oh crap, I forget who we played and when we uh, opened up Saint the field in Saint Paul, but I think this would be another like kind of a, I don't want to say a layup, but a winnable match to give Minnesota and really develop that reputation of playing U.S. soccer games there. Agreed, Donald. For me, uh, we going to Vegas, bro. Yeah, all right. Come on now. We got to start out. We're starting out with three points and some, and we need the money. We need to be able to earn, win the money on the tables so that we can fly to the other place on January 30th. So <laughs> it's Vegas. Yeah, you know, that's the, that is the weird one because January 30th, we, uh, we play at Canada, possibly. I think that's probably where we're going. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's not, you know, it, it's going to be interesting because we have, we have two home games, but Canada sprinkled in. So, you know, to Jared's point, St. Paul to Can- to probably Toronto would be nice, but Vegas to Toronto, who cares? That's fun. I want I want my I want my players to not have hypothermia and frostbite yeah. <laughs> before they get to Canada, uh, because that'll affect our team. So I, I think you give them as a warmer atmosphere as possible, and then you fly in. They're well rested. Well, maybe not well rested, but definitely have getting paid on the slots and in the tables, and then they can fly with ease to Canada. Because uh, here's the thing, I think Canada would not put that game at BMO because I don't think BMO has the the heating capacity to Ooh. fix the, to have their field because they were going to do it for uh, for CFL, but I don't think they ever got around to it. So my guess is that game is in Vancouver. Interesting, which okay. is also indoors. And if that's the case, they are already serving it up for us. All right. Okay. Well, no, that is actually that. What is that? January 30th, 30th. game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's going to be cold in Canada no matter what. But that's a good point about BMO because you're going to have to deal with a legitimately frozen field up there in Canada. Mm -hmm. I think Montreal is an option as well, but I think they would go to Vancouver before they go to Montreal. Well, well, probably. All right. Well, I am putting that January 27th game not in a cold environment. In fact, the stadium has a roof that it can close if it wants. We're coming to Mercedes-Benz Stadium 
in Atlanta. Uh, you know, again, it, f- the flight Atlanta, you can get anywhere from. And uh, if you're going to Toronto, great. Uh, keeping this all pretty much in the, oh, I think it'll still be in East Coast, uh, Central uh, Eastern time. Maybe we'll have a Central time game if we play one of the, um, you know, Central American countries. But I think Atlanta's Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And if we're talking about possibly being concerned about not really being able to have a full, you know, U.S. crowd, I don't think you have to worry about that with a lot of the teams that we would be playing uh, it, from this qualifier. You know, El Salvador, maybe, yeah. Antigua and Barbuda. But Trinidad, St. Kitts and Nevis, you know, I don't think we have to worry about the opposing fan base uh, having that big of a presence in Atlanta. So you definitely have a pro U S crowd as well. I think it, I think it would be great. I would love to go down there. Um, I, we need, if you guys down there in Atlanta, if you could sponsor the tailgate or at least get some Lou, uh, Lou will lemon pepper for the tailgate. Yeah. We'll just have the oh, tailgate in magic city. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's fine that's, too. That's yeah, easy. It's fine too. Like, but you have to require it's required. Never forget the Hawks' fortunes kind of sort of turned around, coinciding with Lou Will coming back home and sending Rajon Rondo to the abyss. Because they Lou were turning things knows. around before that, but Lou Will, Lou Will also, knows the magic. He also broke Mike Budenholzer a couple weeks ago, and for that, he is he he can get his jersey retired for all I care. <laughs> all right, so moving on to this uh, February window, uh, the second game of this February window. We have Honduras at home. This is a this is going to be a tough game. I think and everyone will agree that Honduras is going to be a tough game. It's a game that you absolutely have to win at home. I think that's where the toughness comes in. They're a pretty good team. You absolutely have to beat Honduras at home if you want to have a chance to qualify for the World Cup. Um, Jarrett, where are you playing this Honduras match? Oh, we're going to Soldier Field. Honduras gets to play in lake effect weather. Yeah. Like, if this is going to be a swing where we're going to be having to chill out with Canada, we're going to go from Allianz Field. We're going to play in Canada, wherever the hell it may be, which Vancouver's a really good shot for that. Um, but then we're, we're, we're going to go, we're going to go to see, we're going to go to Chicago. You're going to play on the water. Congratulations, right. Honduras. That wind's going to whip around that stadium. I hope you have fun. Man. I really don't. I, yeah, I was about to say that, that's almost cruel. Um, <laughs> Of course, that a bunch this is this is home field advantage though, though having the United States being so damn big and so damn broad when it comes to ge- uh, you know geological features and weather patterns. Man, we can we can bring it down south where it's going to be mild, or we can make you play in an Ice Age movie. Whatever you want to do. Well, that is a good pick. I actually, I really do think that's a, a very strategic but also a very good pick. So uh, Soldier Field in February 2nd. I like it. Um, Donald, where's your Groundhog Day match? Look, Groundhog Day, you have to see your shadow, and that shadow is going to be in Denver. Dick Sporting Goods Park. Let's keep it cold, too. Uh, All right. Okay. We'll, we'll trade the win for some skis, and let's, let's, let's have it. Okay, so there you go. February 2nd, playing in Dick Sporting Goods Park in Denver. Uh, interesting pick. I like, I like that idea a lot. Um, all right, let's move on, and I'll say that I am putting this one. We're playing Honduras in a place that um, I'm a little concerned we might get some Honduran fans, but I still think that we would absolutely blow out of the water with a great U.S. presence. And uh, we're going to go to Bank of California Stadium in Los Angeles, California, home of LAFC. They are a rowdy crowd. I do think that we could get a home field advantage for this match. And the U.S. men have never played there before. So I think that this would be a great opportunity to finally play a match in Bank of California Stadium. And I really do think that USSF will put a game here during this cycle. And coming from Canada, you would get to thaw out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't have to worry about the preserved frostbite. You know, you're right. still still feeling okay. All right, so uh, the last window, March, March th- uh, 27th, we are playing the C and D winner, which uh, Group C is definitely tougher than Group D, uh, probably looking at Curacao or Guatemala. Both teams present interesting challenges. I would say that those are also uh, teams that you can get a very good home field advantage against and a team that you can take advantage 
playing at home against as well. Jarrett, where do you play this game on March 27th? Well, I believe this is our last home game. Yes. I like the idea of having a coronation at Providence Park. Oh, okay. I'm hoping at this point, we're in a position where we're saying, hey, we're in good shape. We're going to go play in another World Cup. Last time was a blip. Let's go celebrate in Portland with all of our friends. All right. I uh, I, can't, I I agree with that because, again, man, you're going to get a great U.S.-based atmosphere there. Donald, you've been to uh, Portland, right? I have. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that place? I, I love Portland. I, I have not gone for a U.S. game. Obviously, we've only had really run there since they yeah. joined MLS, uh, and that was back in that Gold Cup, I want to say 2013. Uh, but I went for a uh, Portland game uh, a few years ago. I think it was 2017, um, and it was – outstanding it was it was a great time and uh i think the thing about them is and it was before it was just before they started the the expansion mm-hmm. uh, of that one side so the noise level obviously mm-hmm. for that yeah. game you will want if, if it's if it's a game that will mean something you'll want the noise level and that's where they would be able to fire it up a notch yeah this is such a tough window because like you have the mexico game you have the costa rica game both on the road you absolutely have to make sure you're getting three points in this window in your home game. This is a tough, tough place to have to pick. So, Donald, where are you putting this March 27th game? We're going to Nashville, and I think oh yeah, it, we're opening up the new stadium. It's a place that we've never lost uh, in World Cup qualifying. It's a place that would be a great party town if we've already qualified, which I think we hopefully, if, if this goes well, I know that last March window is the worst window possible because it's our two – uh, toughest away trips, but I do think that because of that, we have enough points to qualify when we beat Honduras in Colorado uh, in, in Denver, and then we can go to Mexico, just focus on winning at the Azteca and coming home and having a party on Broadway. I love that idea. <laughs> with a party Everybody's going to party like a bunch of bachelorettes. I'm here for it. Uh, hey, get the get the pedal pedal pubs ready. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh yes. You have to make that team that we're playing, whichever that qualifying is, they have to do a pedal pub when they get there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have to. I mean, it's like tradition. You go to Nashville, you have to do a pedal pub. So, mm-hmm. like, it's just part of their pregame little. And then you know. and then we'll give them, we'll, we'll walk, roll out the welcome mat. We'll give them the hottest of hot chickens. And, oh, you know, okay. they can, you know, really, just really make sure that they're all warm inside before they hit the field. Oh God! Just I'm uh, here's the problem with that. I'm imagining you playing 80 minutes, at least, of high intensity any sporting event with a stomach full of hot chicken and beer. I've done it before. It, it is, sounds <laughs> it is terrific, and your body hates you. So, yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things that you either get used to it or you get left in the dust. Man, I, I feel uh, like that's a really like good that. way for man. Your center backs are just a step slow today. Hey, you're mm. lucky they were a step slow. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and, but just make sure then you go to the other side of Nashville for the U.S. and, like, you get all the clean-eating organic food that you get in, like, East Nashville, you know? That's the that's the key there. Nashville's you a weird balance. place. Nashville's a sneaky weird place, I feel like. Yeah, no. It's, enough it's, credit. It is. It has that – very much has that potential. All right, so for my final match, March 27th, I am going to Rio Tinto Stadium in Salt Lake. We talked about the altitude. We talked about, you know, you got to go play Mexico before this. Uh, So you're going to be at altitude already at El Azteca. Uh, So I'm going to come home and play at Rio Tinto in Salt Lake. And also, I feel like that's a really good U.S.-based crowd. It's a really nice stadium. It's beautiful. It will be a very nice way to celebrate the finale of the home qualifying cycle. Uh, so yeah, Rio Tinto is where I'm playing the last match. It's a solid choice, and it can still be cold there too, which would be great uh, for playing whoever it is yes. we're playing. It'll be like it'll have the potential to be just cold enough to make it very uncomfortable. So I like mm-hmm. that. Hey y'all, it's Bart. I have a personal plea. I am participating in the ATL Nations Cup 2021. This is a charity soccer event that supports soccer in the streets, a local nonprofit here in Atlanta that delivers soccer programming to kids in the area for free. We're trying to give kids access to the game of soccer, regardless of their socioeconomic status. 
and you can help by donating to my fundraising campaign. Just go to my.soccerstreets.org slash USA21 to donate today. Even $10 gives a kid free access to soccer here in Atlanta. Again, you can donate at my.soccerstreets.org slash USA21. I'll also include this link in the show notes and in the tweet coming out with this episode. Let's make soccer available to everyone. Thanks in advance. All right, we have slated all of our matches. I'm going to run through this. So, Jarrett, your first one, uh, September 5th in Fort Lauderdale's Inter-Miami CF Stadium. October 7th against Jamaica playing in Austin at Q2 Stadium. October 13th. Probably the most uh, weird place and random place that we could have gone. Playing Costa Rica in the Superdome in New Orleans. Right there. We're going on Bourbon Street. Watch out for the Gators going to New Orleans. I like that pick a lot. Uh, November 12th, the Mexico game. You are keeping it in Columbus, Ohio. January 27th, you're playing in the cold, frigid north of Allianz Field up in St. Paul, Minnesota. And then February 2nd, Keeping with the cold theme, you're making Honduras come to Chicago and play on the banks of Lake Michigan at Soldier Field. And you're wrapping it all up on March 27th in Providence Park in Portland. How do you feel about your slate of games? I feel good about it. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna die on the hill of making Mexico play in Columbus one more time, but I will absolutely concede that if they don't win that game exactly, dos a cero, I will – concede to moving it wherever the hell you or Donald want to move it to. <laughs> okay. Donald, what do you think about Jarrett's uh, slate there? Uh, it looks pretty nice. It, yeah, I think the only one is yeah, I'm going to hold them to that, uh, to that Columbus pick. So yeah. it, it better work. It better work, bro. Man, I'm just, you know, I'm feeling the same way. If it doesn't work, I'm going to look like a fool. I mean, not as much the fool as <laughs> players, but that's between yeah. them. <laughs> I'm yeah, more worried that's... about like, keeping like Christian Pulisic in one piece if he goes into New Orleans or Las Vegas. Yeah, you got to watch out for the young ones too. Like, you know, if you have Brendan Aronson and Caden Clark that somehow gets called up in the same one, you're like, yeah. you got Caden Clark, an 18-year-old on Bourbon Street. Get out of Chaperone. <laughs> yeah, but the Chaperone can't then also be like Weston McKinney, though. That, I feel like that would be no, the best. It's going to be like a higher person. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, you, stick with him. That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Donald, your slate of games, September 5th, opening it up at Audi Field in D.C. You won't have to travel far. Uh, going October 7th against Jamaica at SeatGeek Stadium in Bridgeview, Illinois. Then Costa Rica on the 13th of October at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky. Playing Mexico on November 12th at Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City, Kansas. And your uh, wild card pick, you've got January 27th, Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Then coming back home on February 2nd against Honduras in Dick Sporting Goods Park in Denver and wrapping it all up at the new uh, Nashville Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee on March 27th. Uh, how do you feel about this schedule that you've compiled? Sounds like 21 points to me, and we can Ooh, work again okay. the other 21. So I like it. All right. I, I mean, hey, look, I think you picked, like I said, I think you picked the most logical and sensible location for that Mexico match. And I love the fact that you included Len Family Stadium because I think it's a one of the best soccer stadiums in the country. It's a beautiful venue. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to to U.S. soccer hearing this and making it so, so I can travel all these and just be welcomed by saying, yes, I did pick this. Yeah, I'm going to have to, like, at them uh, when I put this out. Like, hey, uh-huh. put it here. <laughs> Jared, how do you think we get U.S. soccer to play in a place like Lynn Family Stadium? I, I think it shouldn't be as hard as maybe people think it should be because it's, it's, it's a growing market. I think you tell them, hey, hey, come play to in a growing market that is pretty uniquely American. Yeah. And let's go have some fun. We can all drink some bourbon afterwards. We can watch some horses race. We can, I don't know, we'll go out into the woods and, man, who knows what we'll find. Probably find some stills. We have a good old time. Yeah, I mean, Kentucky, Louisville's great. Kentucky's a, a interesting location regardless. I don't yeah, know. Louisville's a weird place within Kentucky, which is its own brand of weird. So, <laughs> yeah. And I don't honestly know the last time U.S. soccer has ever played in Kentucky, if they ever have at all. I, I don't think they have that I could find. But, you know, that's recorded history. Who knows what happened before, you know, 1990. So I think, Donald, bringing us to Kentucky would be great. So thank you for that. Of course. All right, my schedule is September 5th, opening it up in BBVA Stadium in Houston. October 7th, Exploria Stadium in Orlando. 
going to play Costa Rica on October 13th and Bree Stevens Field in Madison, Wisconsin. My Mexico match, November 12th in West End Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. January 27th, coming to Atlanta to play Mercedes-Benz. Then playing Honduras on February 2nd in Bank of California Stadium in Los Angeles. And then finishing it all up on March 27th at Rio Tinto Stadium in Salt Lake City. So that is mine. Uh, Guys, thoughts on that? I still think you chose violence on that Mexico pick, but, you know. (laughs) I I do, too. I I think I chose a great location. Sorry, it's at the expense of Columbus fans. I mean, it's a violently good location. So (laughs) Columbus just won. Columbus just won a cup. It's okay to choose violence against them right now. You're not kicking a dog when it's down. Well, they're kind of down, but, you know, I can only only do so much. Uh, Gentlemen, I appreciate this wonderfully interesting thought exercise. Um, But to end on a somewhat serious note, Jarrett, what is it that you look for in a soccer stadium in the United States that can give the U.S. a great home field advantage? Um, I mean, I'm looking at size, obviously, because I don't want it to be too cavernous. And yeah. you know, where you're playing in, in just like an open arena where it's just kind of the, the energy doesn't pulsate through it correctly. Um, I'm looking at location and not just in terms of the city itself, but the community around it. How's the soccer mm. community there? How diverse is it? Does it, does it give us, does it give you the energy to kind of pulsate, not just in the stadium that day, but where you can feel it in the neighborhood around the stadium, that something big is going to happen. Does it have the accommodations? Does it have, you know, a walk friendly environment where uh, the walkability score, if you will, is pretty high around the stadium where you can get out and about and, you know, go adventure, go to a restaurant, go to a bar and help create that atmosphere and that energy to permeate outside of the walls of the stadium itself. That sounds so like nice and just a really happy fe- feeling. <laughs> like <laughs> that would be great to actually have. Like seriously, that would be that's what you want. That's what we see in Europe. That's what we see in South America of the neighborhood vibrating with the passion of the supporters and the just the electricity of a soccer game going on and you want to feel that in the United States. Uh, I, I know for a fact that Columbus has had that when they've had U S soccer games there. So I cannot even take that away from them, but it is, we're getting there. We're getting there. That's all I'm going to say. All right. So Donald, you have been to a lot of these locations. You've been to a lot of locations around the U S to watch U S soccer and MLS games. What is it about, like, what are you looking for in a soccer stadium that you, you've said children's mercy park is the best one that, in, in the U S what do you make a good soccer stadium in the United States? The fans on top of the field. It's mm. to create a wall of sound and it, not just in the supporters end, but all around the stadium. I think it's a lot of combination of things and, and really it's not even the atmosphere outside the stadium because the atmosphere outside the stadium is not what wins games. It's the atmosphere inside the stadium that'll help support the team on the field. And I think the stadium itself, the amenities, you know, concessions, that all helps people get excited about the game. But it's that energy and the way that a stadium kind of bottles it up and expends it onto the field. That's why I like, you know, of course, I'm a homer for this, but I like Audi Field because it's the steepest stadium in the country. And the sound goes straight out. If I'm next to you, you will not hear me. But if you're across the stadium from me, you will hear every word that I say. And it's because the stadium is designed just like uh, Children's Mercy. It's designed to go out to the field so that the guys that are used to it, your home team, is like, cool, we, we, yeah. we're used to playing this. Whereas the opposing team cannot communicate, they can't talk. And when you can't hear the person next to you think, and you can't hear your coach command give instructions, you can't hear your teammates bark out commands and, and direct you to a note location, and you have to kind of turn around to look at them, You've lost your man, your man scoring, the crowd's going nuts. You do it all over again. That's what creates that atmosphere, the building of the den, the energy, and making sure that it goes the one place where it's needed the most on the field. Well, I love both of those answers. They, I'm hoping that as we continue, I love seeing more MLS teams building stadiums. I love even more seeing USL teams building legitimate soccer specific stadiums. Uh, and Jarrett, to your point about just the neighborhood, I, I'm I'm seeing it. We, we keep getting more and more of just the passion and 
the local support behind teams. So we're building. And uh, I think this 2022 World Cup qualifying schedule and, and having seven home games is going to be really awesome for U.S. soccer to continue to build a fan base that, you know, I get it. We're a little, especially for the men, we're a little um, disgruntled at this point in time. We're not as hopeful as we used to be, but I think this could be a comeback tour for that. Gentlemen, I appreciate so much your time. I know we did this for a long time, but I appreciate your time in this completely senseless and useless and nothing about this was serious, but it was fun. And I appreciate your time for it. Oh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. It was great. Well, thank you all for listening to that wonderfully weird and fun. At least I hope it was fun. It was fun for me. World Cup qualifier venue draft for the U.S. men's national team. I'd love to hear your thoughts on where you want to watch the USMNT play World Cup qualifiers coming up this fall and next winter. It's obviously a very fun topic of conversation. So tweet at the show at Soccer For Us Pod. Give us your thoughts and opinions. I'll actually put all of our picks in a graphic under the tweet in which this uh, episode will be put out. So you can respond right there and roast Jared and Donald and I in what we picked. This is the first in a series of podcasts leading up to CONCACAF Nations League. I will be releasing a podcast later this week with Caleb Cook of USMNT Corner, and we will be looking ahead at the USA-Switzerland match. Not so much about Switzerland, but just the roster that Greg Berhalter compiled and what that means going forward. And then we will also talk uh, in an episode after that about the actual CONCACAF Nations League, the roster itself, and the matches we have against Honduras and the final against either Costa Rica or Mexico or the third place match, I guess, against Costa Rica or Mexico. So be on the lookout for all those. Thanks again for listening. I hope you have subscribed to soccer down here on whatever podcatcher you are listening right now. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm Bart. I'm out.